Welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which I'm going to start to look at some of the animators and just very briefly go through them with you so that you get an idea of what they can do. So we've got a piece of text which I'm pretty much stuck in the middle of this uh, composition here and open up the animate panel. We have the first one which is enable per character 3D which I'll come back to a bit later on but let's have a look at anchor point to start off with. Now when you click anchor point and we open up our range selector, I'm on my selection tool here, you'll see that we've got the anchor points shown as these little X's and then I can change the anchor points so I can move them up or I can move them down the text will move accordingly the anchor points will always appear to be pretty much in the center of the screen the text is going to move accordingly now you can obviously make a jump of some sort simply by playing with the anchor point so when I pull the start across it's going to jump back to where it was originally created which can create some pretty nice effects you can do the same with position, however. So why would I want to play with anchor point? Well, one of the reasons I might want to play with the anchor point is that I might want to add something else such as rotation. So if I go to add, property, and I go to rotation, bear in mind now that when I rotate, everything's going to rotate around the anchor point. So if I perhaps pull this so that we've just got the is selected. So that's the only area where these effects are applied. So the anchor point and rotations apply to the is and I now change the rotation of is you'll see the is is going to rotate around its anchor point and of course if I then take it back and move the anchor points back down a bit or to a different place I can pull the anchor points up and down across however I want even perhaps down the bottom there and then it's gonna animate from the anchor point so you can see that moving the anchor point shows where something is going to happen from. So that can also apply to, say, scale. So if I was to apply scale to this, and I change the anchor points, let's move the anchor points so that we can really get a feel for what this is going to look like. And then I move out scale. You'll see that scale is scaling from the anchor point, which means that we're going to get a very different response so if I was to perhaps right click on anchor point and reset those you'll see that the scale is taking place right from the bottom when I play with scale it's going to scale from that point whereas if I then move the anchor points again you'll see that the way it scales is going to look entirely different so that's why you might want to play with anchor point because you've got something else that you want to affect at the same time so I'm just going to select this animator and delete it go back to animate and we'll have a very brief think about a few things one of the ones that sometimes confuses people is actually position it might seem very obvious, but let me just do this. I'm going to select position, I'm going to open up my range selector, select start just to make sure you can see. Inside this range, okay, it's not related to where it is inside the screen. The text could have been moved around to anywhere we like, and yet we still have note the range. So if I just pull this around, the range is still not linked to the screen, but linked to the text. So if I was to move the position of the text, everything inside the range, so from the beginning to the end, is also going to change its position. So if I take the X dimension and scrub it off screen, I'm going to hold the shift key, just pull it off screen, it is still inside, you can just see it on the edge here, it's still inside this range selector, so that when I start to pull the beginning out, and it escapes outside of the range selector, the text is going to fly in. And this actually is one of the problems that quite a few people have had with some of the presets that ship with After Effects. Now, there are text animation presets, and sometimes you'll get something that's supposed to fly on screen pretty much like this. But it starts on screen something like this, because it was, say, made for a PAL DV or an NTSC DV, and the new composition you've got happens to be a HD preset of some sort. So, if you get this sort of thing happening where you've got a preset and the text is not far enough off, bear in mind the text is still inside its range, so all you need to do is scrub the text off screen to start with and then the animation that's been applied will still affect the text, so it will still fly in as the animation was originally designed to work. 
Okay, so that's position. I'm just going to again delete the animator and open up animate and go to, we've looked at opacity, we've looked at most of these here. There is one at the bottom that says all transform properties, which is perhaps a little bit confusing. If I click all transform properties, you'll notice that inside my range selector down here in the timeline, I can animate any of these items. That rather than having to do them individually, if I've got an awful lot of things that I need to change all in one go, I can do them by animating all of the properties in one go. This isn't actually generally the way that I work. I tend to do each individual one separately because there are other options for text animation, which we haven't got to yet, which allows me to play with things in perhaps a different way. But if you've got a whole load of things you want to do, you can just say, right, animate them all together. And as long as you are doing them all under one animator, that should work just fine. In the next tutorial, we'll have a little look at some more of these properties and see what else they can do. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.